Hi, it's Brittany from the Imperial and welcome back to my channel. Today we're making the Dinah handbag and it is a pattern from Catsiopia Patterns. I love this one. Um, so I've done Meow Fest twice now the last two years and this has been my like main feature item. I took six of them last year with me. I sold five of them there. I took 15 this year. Oh, we got rained out halfway through so I sold five there. I've sold some online. Oh geez, I've made like 20 of these now. I don't even know, but it's so cute. Um, I used the Little Black Dress Glitter Vinyl. It's an Ace Glitter Vinyl from More Me Know. I used the Black and White Roses Waterproof Canvas from More Me Know. Um, I'm pretty sure my zipper tapes from More Me Know. All of my hardware, all of my zipper pulls are from More Me Know. <laughs> the pink nose is the Imperium Pink Glitter Vinyl from Warmy Know. It's what I've decided is just going to be my signature cat nose from now on. Um, so I guess you could call this my Warmy Know bag. <laughs> Everything except the foam and the thread. Yeah. So I used the Bubblegum Pink Thread from Wizardry Citry and then I used black and like a dark gray from Sunny Sewing. The only changes I made to this bag is, I don't cut my foam out of the seam allowance. You probably should. Um, and then instead of turning the bag through the interior zipper, I left an opening in the lining. I also left the zipper open though so that we could pull the lining through um, and then close that and close the zipper, sorry. Um, I do this a little bit different too. I always use vinyl so I can have raw edge. Um, so if you can tell, I probably need to clean that up just a touch, but I do this a little bit differently than the pattern tells you to. But for the most part, I make it exactly how it tells you to. It's so cute. Look at it. Oh, wait. Ha -ha. Okay, so <laughs> it has this exterior zipper pocket and it's a decent size. Then you've got the flap. You've got a really big slip pocket here, would be great for like sliding your phone in. You've got a roomy interior and you have that interior zipper pocket. It's such a fun pattern. I really love it. Um, thank you so much for letting me do a tutorial on this, Bethany. Yes. Um, you should check out her other patterns. They're all really fun. She has like a bat and some other, th they're fun, but of course. This is my favorite. If you haven't already subscribed, I would absolutely love it. Um, if you haven't checked out, I have a membership on my channel. Um, it's the Perfect Pals. Um, you can always look at that. It's optional, but appreciated. Um, let me know if you've made it or if you're going to make it. And I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. All right, so we're going to go over the pieces first before we do anything. I've got as much prepped as I can so far. So we have the front flap. I've already basted all the foam on. In the pattern, it does recommend that you cut the foam out of the seam allowance. Since I have an industrial and a cylinder arm, I did not, but um, that's definitely something to keep in mind. I took the pattern piece and I cut into the nose so that I could place the nose correctly. And then I cut slits for the whiskers so that I could trace my lines. You can flip it over, do the other side. So that piece is ready to sew. And then I have two zippers, one for the exterior, one for the interior pocket. So here's my back exterior piece with the foam already basted. Here's my front main exterior piece. I have my front slip pocket piece. I've already put my magnet on. And then I have my exterior gusset piece. I have my strap connectors piece, my crossbody connectors piece. Um, I already folded it over and did stitch that. I was making a bunch of them at once and I overly prepped this piece. Um, I have my crossbody strap already folded in fours, ready to sew. Um, here is my front slip pocket lining piece 
And then here are my two main body lining pieces. Here is my flap, front flap lining piece with the magnet already on it. Here is my gusset liner, my interior zipper uh, lining pieces, and then these are the two lining pieces for my exterior zipper pocket. So we'll set all that there. I have two 3 4 inch D-rings, one 3 4 inch slider. I like the wide ones for the thicker vinyls. Two 3 4 inch snap hooks. And then I have my nameplate. And yeah, so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna stitch this crossbody strap to get it out of the way, I guess. Okay, so starting the strap, I've already folded it over and I'm using a stitch length of about four and a half and I'm just gonna go all the way around. I kind of left this clip longer than I normally would have because I had prepped it with a bunch of other straps that I already sewed about two weeks ago. I think it's been that long. Um, I wouldn't really recommend leaving clips on this kind of vinyl that long. The indents will come out, but it'll probably take some time. I might use some heat to try to get them to come out. I'll just uh, take like a hair dryer or I use an embossing gun and just breeze some heat over it to try to ease them out faster. It's like gets my attention off. I think it's fine. Um, then I like to just trim the ends and make sure they're even. This one's sticking out just a tiny bit. And this is done the same way as your basic crossbody strap always is. I like using this little tool from Julie Lee Creations. And I almost always use the A with the C. You're always going to use the C, but you could use the B. So I'll make a dot, the dots on that side. Luna's on the floor playing with the end of the strap. Alright, so we've got that. Uh, now I will punch the holes. I like using my crocodile. I bought the rainbow punch from Warmy No, but I still need to unpackage it. It's so pro oh, definitely use the smaller hole. Alright, so we've got those. Take my rivets. And then I like taking the end that I backstitched on for this part because it gets hidden more. It, it doesn't truly matter, but... Alright, then I'm going to set this real quick. And then making sure... 
the wrong side is up like this um sorry i'm kind of going through this pretty fast because it is a basic crossbody strap On almost every bag. <laughs> All right. What in the world? Luna, are you okay? Sorry. Luna. All right. So there's the crossbody strap. Now we'll move on to the front flap. Okay, so we're going to do the front flap. I'm going to do the pink nose first, so I've changed my thread um, on the top and the bobbin to pink. I'm going to start at the corner. I have long tails on my thread so I can pull it to the back and tie it instead of back stitching. So I'm going to drop my needle in the corner. I'm also going to change my stitch length to a 4 for the face. And I'm just going to go slow and make sure I stop in the corner. You want to make sure your needle is coming back up before you turn. Same thing. Taking my time. And then right before the needle goes down, I'm making sure it's going to stop in the corner. Needle is back up. I'm pivoting. I'm making sure these threads are out of the way so I don't stitch through them on the bottom. And then on the final stitch, I want to try to get it to go down into the original hole that I started with. I'm going to pull the needle back up and I'm going to pull a long tail. So I've got these two threads and these two threads. I'm going to tug on these and I get like this little loop. What we're going to do is we're going to pull that up. So those two go together and pull this loop too. All right, so now I'm going to knot these off. And then I'm going to trim this just a little bit. So now our nose is appliqued on. When I do a black cat purse, I like to do a dark gray, like silver for the whiskers because black won't stand out. So this is the color I'm using. This pink is bubblegum from Wizardry. I really like it with the Imperium pink glitter. And then this is, um, I don't know, this is the number. I get this Amon thread from Sunny Sewing. I really like it for my solids. Um, I buy my variegated threads from Wizardry, and then um, shades that I can't get from Sunny, I'll buy from Wizardry, so like that bubblegum color. So again, when I'm threading my needle and putting my bobbin in too, I make sure that I will have long tails so that I can pull the thread and knot it. It's really hard doing that when you don't leave a long tail. Got my tails. And then, I know it's probably hard to see, but I have the lines on here. I'm just going to start 
and stop with my long tails. And I try to make sure it's going to stop where the line stops, but I don't want to make the final stitch look like too big. So just use your best judgment. And I do baste the foam to this piece before I do this. I think it gives like a little 3D effect. It's really cute. And hand crank however you need to. Take your time. So I'll just lift my foot and check and see how close I am to the end of the line. If I need to do an extra stitch or if maybe uh, I can just adjust the final stitch a little bit. You can back stitch if you'd like to. I personally think it's a better finish if you tie these threads off. So I've got a lot of threads to pull to the back now. I just kind of start over here with these three. If you're using snips like I am to do this, you want to make sure that you don't cut them when you pull them. I like using my um, stiletto. And you want to make sure that you didn't pull the thread out too much. It'll do like a kind of like a bubble, a loop. It won't look like the thread stayed as tight as it should have. This does take longer than back stitching. Okay. So then we'll get to these three and we'll just kind of pull up on them together. You don't have to trim them as you go, but I figure since I'm already holding those threads, it makes it a little bit easier.
last three. Our face is done. Um, if you have some of your silver marking or whatever you use still showing, you can get rid of that. The flap is ready to go. Now that the face is stitched on, you're gonna put the lining piece right sides together with it. You wanna make sure you already have your magnetic snap piece on. You're gonna stitch all the way around, but leaving the top flat part open. Make sure you take your time on the curves. Sure you back stitch at the start and the stop and you can check and make sure that your curve is good you might need to fix this one spot it's a little Better to fix it now than to have it be messed up. And I'm going to clip at these just so it'll turn well. I like to take my pinking shears and trim everywhere that the curve is. You don't have to trim the flat part. just where you have curves. I'm gonna flip it, but I'm gonna wait to top stitch mine until I'm at the end of the bag. Um, I like doing it on my cylinder arm before I top stitch the, the end of the bag, just so the top stitching is the same. And because sometimes with me not cutting the foam out of my seam allowance, I mess up the top stitch. So again, you really could trim the foam out of your seam allowance. Okay, I'll take my screwdriver or another tool and I make sure that I gently push all the edges out. And then I'll kind of clip this right before I top stitch it so that I don't leave the marks. That's so cute. All right, so that is almost done. The strap's almost done, so we'll set it to the side too. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the side connectors. So this long piece, again, I drew a line down the middle. I put some double-sided tape. I folded it in and I top stitched. 
you could cut two pieces this size or you could cut one long piece um, if you do the one long piece you're gonna trim it in half like I just did I'm gonna take some tape and I'll need two pieces for these I'm gonna put one on each piece about in the same spot then I'm gonna get my D-rings what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your D-ring on so that the flat spot is on the wrong side you're gonna fold up let's see I'm folding about a half of an inch and then I'm folding this piece down basically you want this folded or the raw where they meet up to be about in the center of this area you don't want it too far down or too far up but just somewhere in where like the clips are so we're gonna do that on the other side too um, and this is similar to a lot of crossbody connectors I've done on bags so you've probably already done them put my clips and then I'm gonna take two more pieces I'm going to move my clips for a second and I'm going to put this right here so I'm gonna clip it again just so it stays in place and you want to make sure that this doesn't go all the way to the bottom or you'll end up with like a sticky area on your bag for the placement of these what I did is I took my pattern piece and I'm just gonna fold that so it's like that make sure it's there and I where the spot is I punched a hole in my paper pattern piece so I could just mark this because um, I do production make these bags. I've made a lot of them. So this is faster for me, but you can just find the center and measure. That is completely effective too. Alright, so I'm going to take one. And I'm going to take this off. And then where my mark is, I like to have my D-ring basically sit right on that. And then you're going to want to make sure that this looks good let's see do I have I like having a scrap piece of vinyl so this part so I'll just grab one what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start up here and I'm gonna backstitch a couple times and I make my stitches go right inside the stitches I've already done. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to put the scrap so that my presser foot doesn't mess with it. I'm making sure that this is straight. I can move that once I'm done with it. And then I stop my stitches about an eighth inch from the bottom of that. I like to give a back stitch right there and then I'm going to line my stitches up again right next to the line I'm gonna come back up here get to where I was before and again every time I'm pivoting I'm making sure my needles coming back up and then back stitch at the top again you could put a rivet in here if you want um, I don't I just do the stitches and then we're gonna repeat what we just did so that's what it looks like though we're gonna repeat that on this side so again I line up that dot with my d-ring and you can wipe that away too All right, so same thing put 
putting this scrap here again to protect everything. A little back stitch. Make sure it's in the right spot. Back up. And back stitch. Um, again, that's the way I do that. If you have a preferred method for how you put them on, feel free to do it. So now we've got our gusset ready. Oh, also good time to notch your centers. So that is ready to go once we finish everything else. Okay, for the front slip pocket, gotta find the lining piece for it. Here it is. All right, so I have the front slip pocket and the lining piece. This is where I like to put my logo, my nameplate. Um, you can do handmade, whatever you wanna do. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and attach that now. And I'm trying to remember exactly how I had this lined up. I did it so many times. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I have found that if you take an awl and or like a stiletto and just push right in, at least for mine. <laughs> It works pretty well, but I think I have it on another table or something. Uh, if you mark it, you can wipe it off. And I like putting a piece of duct tape right on the back of that. I usually use pink, but for some reason my roll of duct tape changed from pink to blue. <laughs> it was a pink roll. <laughs> okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to match these up. And this is kind of opposite of what you normally do because we are stitching here. So we're stitching the sides and the top, but we're leaving this bottom open. So you're not stitching the curves. You're kind of starting here and here. Um, sometimes I end up going too far up, but then I just make sure my seam allowance is consistent the whole way across. It makes my pocket about an eighth of an inch taller. I, I haven't noticed that it's affected anything yet. But you could mark it. It'd probably be best if you have a hard time like I do stopping where you're supposed to. So see, that's where I've started and stopped. I like to notch this corner right here. And then we'll turn this so that it's right sides out.
a bit, making sure I get that corner to look nice. You can just finger press this. And once I get the one side, you can kind of just lay it down and flatten it like this. Okay. Now we're gonna top stitch across the top only for Luna. It's like the black cat nose and making a black cat bag. Make sure you back stitch with the start and the stop. You're just doing a top stitch here. Trim your threads. And then I've been making a notch at my center and then on your main exterior piece that does not have the cutout also can find the center line that up and clip the bottom in place hey Luna She's like, love me. Um, mine never line up perfectly here, but that's okay because I'm going to trim it off. So what you're going to do is make sure that it looks even. We're stitching here down to the bottom and back up. And you want to make sure that it doesn't shift when you start. Make sure you do a good back stitch here too. I like that this makes a nice sized uh, front and slip pocket. Hi Luna. <laughs> She's normally not like this. Um, also make sure you have that magnet on before we stitch that together. I forgot to mention that. Um, and this is where you can trim down. I've got this foam sticking out. And then if those corners stuck out, you can trim them down. And now it's all even. So this piece is ready to go. We'll set it to the side. All right. I'm going to take my back exterior piece, the zipper for it, and the lining pieces for it. So that's the taller rectangle ones. And this is how I do this pocket. You do not have to do it this way. If you like taking and putting right sides together, stitching your box and cutting it out and flipping it, you can do that. That That's fine. Um, I just noticed this isn't cut perfectly. Better. Um, but what I do is I take my pattern piece and I cut that out and then I cut my foam out further in on that. I don't know what happened with this one but it is not lined up as good as my other ones. It's fine. So I want this to be out of the way so that when I go to stitch the zipper in you can't see the foam. So what I'm going to do, <laughs> Luna is all about this bag. She knows we're making a black cat bag. I'm going to put 
some double-sided tape down these spots. Again, this is the way I've been doing it. I think it looks good. Um, I like doing it this way. You do not have to do it this way. Okay, so I do my purse pile pockets this way too. I'm gonna peel this. I can get it started without the tape coming off. So let's see. There we go. All right. I like to try to start with the zipper down further, but. I put it up higher so that's my bad I'm gonna line this up as best I can I'll usually let's see here I'm trying to keep this in view I want the zipper tape centered as much as possible okay that looks pretty good so what I'm gonna do now is another line of tape on here. Now normally you could cut that rectangle out of this also and I was doing that but it's really hard to line up because you can't see the hole from the back and I was kind of missing it sometimes. So this is what I started to do. Um, again, if you're not a fan of this method, I understand. But I'm taking right side down and I'm just putting it, no, I'm sorry, right side up because this is the inside of the pocket. And I'm pressing that down, making sure this still looks good. And then since the zipper pull is right here, I'm going to start here. I'm going to stitch to here move the pool and finish stitching so it won't be in my way at all and i'm starting so that i'm out of the way of it no blue. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go until I get close to it. And since the foam creates some thickness, I'm making sure that my vinyl stays in a good spot on this. Make sure the needle's down, lift your foot, move your zipper tape. you can go ahead and trim your thread and see how nice that looks and then I know that I didn't miss thread anywhere here what I'm going to do is you could unzip this and then like start cutting in here so that you have a starter hole um, I've been taking my duckbill scissors and going in here and just trimming this back. And this is the inside of the pocket. No one's even going to see it anyways. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just going all the way around and trimming this as close to my stitches as I can, but not too close. You don't want to cut the stitches. So then we've got a perfectly lined up pocket. We're going to take and put this one right sides together with your other lining. I put a couple clips in. Luna. And then I'm just going to stitch this all the way closed. And you are stitching this one all the way closed. I guess I already said that, but... So this back piece is done. We have our exterior done now. I'm just trying to trim this foam so it's out of my way. And we can notch the center on the bottom of this. We can also do the top because we'll need that for lining our flap up. So now that the exterior is done, we are going to line the notch of our gusset up with the notch of that. And then I start clipping a couple clips on both sides for the bottom. Luna, you're cute. You never come in the videos anymore, but you knew this one was all about you. Hmm. All right, so I've got these on the bottom. Then I'm going to take the edge, the end of the gusset, to the end of the this corner on the exterior piece. And I'm going to clip down until it starts to curve. Right about here. I'm going to do that on both sides. So now I'm left with the curves and as you can see it would be a little jumbly so what I do is on the gusset I make some notches I'm really only notching in a fourth of an inch at most you want to make sure you stay out of your seam allowance And then that should help it stretch perfectly into place. Again, do not clip into your seam allowance. That's what's important. So I find that this really makes it sit nicely. You could use staples here if you need to. Um, I've found that I don't need them. I do use staples on other patterns. Luna's on the floor chewing on her toenails now. <laughs> Alright, and then we're gonna stitch around. I like keeping the gusset up. Make sure you backstitch at the start and stop. And you can use like a stiletto 
or a screwdriver to help hold it in place as you go. It's especially helpful on the curves. When you're doing the curves, you want to make sure that your gusset is flat and it's not bunching up or you'll get like pleats or folds or whatever you want to call them when you finish the bag. So go slow on the curves. Make sure you're keeping your seam allowance correct. I'm keeping everything lined up. So you can inspect it, make sure you're good. Mine's nice and smooth. And then I'm going to trim down my seam allowance. Um, see this did stitch the pocket in, which is more than fine. Right, so I'm just going to trim this down really quick. Make sure that you don't get too close, but it does help. The bag sit nicer if you do trim it down some when you flip it. Sorry, I'm just trying to get it in the trash can. Alright, so there, I've trimmed it down. It's not going to be perfect. And then we're going to take our other piece. And I do have the notch, so we're going to line that up again. And same thing, I like to do a little bit of the flat part on each side. And then move over to the edge, line that up, and start clipping down. Doing that to the other side. One more clip here. And then same thing, I'm doing the gusset. So I like to hold this right here. And a good sharp pair of scissors really helps with this too. Make sure that you're only putting the scissors onto it as much as you want it clipped. And that helps control that you won't be Clipping into your seam allowance.
And then same thing, I'm going to go gusset up. It is a little bit harder sewing the second side, but it's, it's not bad, I promise. Okay, so I'm going to use my screwdriver again just to hold it in place. Also, my daughter decorated it with paw prints and fish. <laughs> Taking my time on the curves again, making sure everything stays lined up. And again, if you want to use staples, you can make sure you keep them on your seam allowance and make sure you take them out after. making sure that's flat again so that we don't end up with any folds. That is kind of where like a stiletto and a screwdriver helps too because you can make sure that you're holding it down flat into your seam allowance without the fear of stitching over your finger. You might break your needles and mess your timing up potentially if you hit the screwdriver, but it won't be in your finger. <laughs> All right, so you can kind of go in there and feel too that everything is nice. We're gonna trim this down. And I feel like this side matters more on trimming it down too because once you're at the bottom, you have that front slip pocket, so you're really cutting some bulk out of there. Okay, and then your exterior is done. So we're going to set that aside. And we're going to grab our interior zipper, one main lining piece, and then our lining zipper piece, uh, zipper pocket pieces. So on the wrong side of one, I'm going to draw my lines for my zipper pocket. And what I've been doing, I'm using my ruler, lining it up, and then just going um, within a half inch of the sides. I don't draw the full box because I don't sew the full box and that is my preference. So right sides together. I'm gonna line this up about here and then what I do is I sew a back stitch, sew, back stitch, back stitch, sew, back stitch. I don't sew the smaller parts of the box because it um, makes a nicer finish for me. Um, I just saw Fierce Kitten has a really good video about doing the pockets like this and she she doesn't sew that spot either. She does draw the line in the middle and um, everything else. She doesn't just do the two lines, but she does talk about why she doesn't sew those spots. Okay, so now what I like to do is I will take my seam ripper and start the cut there. And then I'll go almost to the end and then I'll cut 
my slits as close to the corners as I can without cutting my stitches. What I like to do now is fold this and crease real good with my fingers. Fold this down, crease real good with my fingers, and then I will start folding this open and finger pressing real good, adding some clips. Sometimes I'll do this pocket and then I'll work on another part of the pattern and I'll leave it clipped for a little while and that helps it hold the crease. Um, I meant to do it, but for some reason I didn't, but it's fine. Um, you could try to iron this part. Um, even if you're using waterproof canvas, you can just use some steam on it, but I personally don't like to do so. You want to make sure that that sits as flat as possible and see how the corners are nice when they go in. Alright, so I'm making sure it's pressed as well as it can be. And then start taking some clips off, lining my zipper up so that it's centered to that box. And then I've been putting some clips here to help hold it in place. I'll slide this in so that I am past the zipper pull, which is why I like keeping it towards one end. Preferably this end so that you can, when you move the zipper, it closes it still instead of making the opening. And then I will start right after it. Something I've found with the foot that comes with my 1181 is I can kind of keep the outside foot right in between the zipper tape, the teeth, and um, the, the, the fabric piece. <laughs> Sorry, words are hard today. Um, and it gives me a pretty nice spacing. Make sure that this is nice as you go. And then once I get far enough, make sure my needle's down and I can move my zipper and I can take these off. Make sure this is flat so you don't get a bubble when you get there. Pretty good zipper. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna move this to the middle. I'm gonna clip this here. Now the pattern tells you to leave the bottom of this zipper pocket open for turning the bag. And I have been doing that, but I was having a hard time turning the whole bag through the zipper pocket, and my friend Lauren was actually helping me birth these bags and she was too so we started cutting an opening in the lining as well to birth the bag so I'm just gonna leave an opening when we stitch the lining and then we'll still leave this open so that we can close the lining through the pocket and then close the pocket and it just creates a nicer finish so you wouldn't even know that the lining had been left open what I like to do is fold this up here And we'll stitch around the sides and the top, leaving the bottom open. Okay. 
And then once you've stitched that, you can take this, you'll fold it like this. And then fold down like that. So that leaves that open. And we're going to find our centers at the bottom. Probably easier to do before I put the pocket on, but no. Alright, so center. Center. And then our gusset piece. I love this print so much. It's so pretty. And I really like the quality of this waterproof canvas. Alright, so we've got centers. I'm going to do the one with the zipper pocket first. And we're going to fully close this one. We'll leave the opening on the other side. So, for the lining, I really don't clip the gusset. I just kind of fit it together. If you feel... Like, you need to do that, you can, though. I do the corners last, though, still. So what I do here is I just kind of center to center, make a clip, and then I just kind of move it however I need to. You could cut notches if you want, it would help. So for the lining, when you sew it together, you're going to start with your seam allowance matching your exterior, but you're going to go in a little after you get down. But you have to start with the matching seam allowance so that the lining matches the exterior. So that's about where I started to go in some. does bunch up a bit on the lining, especially since I didn't clip it. Just do your best. And then I made sure I switched back to my normal seal on before I got to the end. I'm going to go ahead and trim down the seam loans. got that trimmed down. Same thing with the other side, but we're going to leave a big old opening in the bottom. So, I'm going to put my clip further out and then go to the sides.
And then just like I did the other side, line this up as best I can. I think I accidentally threw a clip away. <laughs> just like threw it into the trash can. Oops. What I like to do to remind myself to leave my openings is I do like a double clip. It usually works for me. Alright, so again, start with your normal seam allowance. I'd say for about two inches is what I try to do before I go in more. You definitely want to make sure you sew this curve before you leave your opening because it, it's hard to finish that curve. Okay. I'm going to leave my opening. back into my normal seam allowance. Okay. So when we trim down this seam allowance, we're going to leave it here where the opening is to make sure there's no issues closing that hole up. what I've done. I trimmed this down, but I stopped here. And then we have this big hole to birth our whole bag. We need to take our lining and turn it right side out. So we've got our lining, our exterior is wrong side out, and we have our flap. So we're going to go over to my cylinder arm. I'm going to top stitch the flap. We're going to line it up and clip it to the exterior. And then we're going to put the lining inside, close it, flip it, and top stitch and we're done. Okay, so we are at the cylinder arm. Like I said, I'm going to clip this a little bit before I top stitch it. I want to make sure that you're at the edge, your curves look nice, probably don't need this many clips, but you know what, it can't hurt. You don't want like your lining sticking way out from the vinyl. The lining I'm using is super cute, but... Yeah, so you can go ahead and close the top too. I like starting there um, with the cylinder arm. I have to hold my sides. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna try to stay out of the camera as much as I can. Here we go. My hardest thing with the cylinder arm is stopping it where I want to because I don't have a synchronizer on my 1181 so I'm just so used to I let off the pedal and it stops so I do have the speed set down pretty low
but I'm just taking my time doing my top stitch. And then with starting and stopping at the top of the flap, you don't actually have to uh, backstitch. All right, so there's a cute little flap. Um, I didn't work the center. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so you wanna make sure you put the flap right sides together on the back of the bag. So that's where your zipper pocket is and not your slip pocket. Definitely make sure you do that right or you're gonna be upset when you take the whole bag apart to fix it. All right, make sure your notches line up and clip that in place. Alright, put some extra clips in so it doesn't shift. And then we're going to put our lining inside. I like my zipper to be in the back of the bag. So your zipper, your flap, and your other zipper are all going to be on the same side. If you don't like that, you can change it though. It's your call. Um, make sure that your D-rings are down. We're gonna line our seams up everywhere. All the corners first. And as long as you kept your seam allowance the same for your exterior and your lining, these should all match up nicely. You don't have to have a cylinder arm to make this. I made seven of them before I got my cylinder arm, but I will say this pattern is what made me want to get one. You can make it completely on a domestic too though. You don't ha even have to have an industrial. You just need to be mindful of the materials you use. So I'm making sure that my sides line up then. I'm clipping them. Everything should line up really nicely. Um, but it definitely is so much easier making this on a cylinder arm but again I have made a lot I plan on making a lot more um, it is cats are my brand so all right we're going to go ahead and stitch around on our normal seam allowance I'm gonna start on a flat part so and I put some washi tape here so I knew where my seam allowance was because I'm not used to this machine yet. So when I have to back stitch, I need to do like two stitches holding my threads. And then I can go. So with this bag, you want to get to your seam. And like I said, I'm gonna try to stay out of the camera. You want to get to your seam, make sure your needle's down, and that's when you pivot. My machine clicks when it goes over the seams. Alright, I have noticed, even with the cylinder arm and this cutout, I, I wish this was missing more. I might have my boyfriend hack at my machine. It's just, it's kind of in my way. It definitely is better but it could be even better. So make sure you go around the curve nicely and then you're working your way 
into that seam again. And once you get to it, you're going to pivot. I'm recording, girly. Um, I was thinking if you, when you're done with your live, you can make me um, mac and cheese and maggies. Okay, yes. As soon as I'm done. Take Kitty upstairs. Okay. I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm not live, I'm recording a video. Oh. I'm thinking my Kitty put it down here, but turned off so we can record each video. So they can show off my okay. little Kitty. Can you go? Yeah. I kind of want you to show off my little Kitty. Okay. So I'm going to. Should we take care of her? Kathia, I'm going to the seam again and pivoting. Today is Thea's half birthday. I made the mistake of saying last night, oh, hey, tomorrow's your half birthday. Um, that's her half birthday present. <laughs> okay. So, again, taking our time on this curve. Getting to the seam and doing a pivot. Okay, so I don't trim the seam allowance down on this part. I feel like it adds structure when I do my top stitch. I haven't, or I'm sorry, I have been trimming this down a little. So what I've been doing with this part is notching at it with my pinking shears. Not a ton, but kind of just enough. So there's that. And remember we left this big opening to birth the whole bag. I'm going to pull the entire bag through that and it's a lot easier than going through the zipper pocket. Still is a lot of layers though. I have problems with my hands too, so. I kind of just try to get that going as much as possible. I think I'm making progress. Ugh. to flatten this out real good. Push the curves out. Make sure they look good. This is your last chance to fix anything if it doesn't. 
think this one would have been really fun with uh, rainbow hardware. Okay, and then on these the curves, I'm gonna push that out. Now, what we can do is pull this pocket through, and then we will grab this opening and pull it up through the zipper pocket. And then pinch that flat. And close this up and once we push that back into the zipper pocket you won't even know that we did that unless you watch this video trim this down if you want to. Um, I think it's fine. Push that back in and then we will close this. I'm going to grab a tack. So the way we did that fold, you just flatten this out completely. push it down in and it just creates a really nice closure. My fingers have about a habit had it now that I've made a whole bag. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in there after I start this. crackers then I don't get nothing else. Okay, I'm still recording. I just wanted to tell you that. So we're gonna push the zipper pocket back in here. I told that that I that I get to eat something. I'll be up in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just pushing those corners back in there. Zipping this up. Pushing the lining in. This is why I record videos during the school year. <laughs> during the day. Oh, okay. Um, so then I'm going to go ahead and put some clips in. Here. The only thing about this bag that I wish I could figure out a better way to do is these seams get pretty bulky and they do shift a little while I'm top stitching even with the cylinder arm so I just go slow I do my best um, it might also be because I leave the foam in the seam allowance so that that could be it you should probably clip the foam out of the seam allowance I still think they look good though, so. Oh, 
All right. So you want to make sure before you do anything else, too. You pro I probably should have, you know, verified this was right, but yeah. All right. Um, I've been starting about here. Um, it's really up to you where you want to start. So this is a top stitch. Take your time. And this again is where you're going to get to the seam and pivot. I do have to give it a slight tug to get over the bumps sometimes. Um, I do have a built-in hump jumper on this. I probably could use that too. Um, this top stitch is a bit difficult on a flatbed machine. But again, it is possible. So, take your time. Pivoting, making sure that my lining is down flat. not moving my clips in time and I've <laughs> broken a couple. It's best if you can be right on the seam when you pivot, but if you can't, you can't. finishing a video. Okay, take your cat. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, so this is what the inside looks like. See how this kind of just got a little bumpy? I really think it's okay though. Oh, it's so cute! Okay, so you've got your inside zipper pocket, your slip pocket, your flap, and when that gusset folds there, it makes the cutest little ears got your back pocket and then this one you really do have to have the crossbody strap like a lot of bags it's optional but unless you put a little carry handle which would actually be really cute so there it is all said and done can you see the whole thing yes thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed I can't wait to hear if you make it to I love this vinyl and it, it just it feels nice like it isn't stiff but it's oh, so good so anyways let me know if you made it if you haven't already subscribed i would absolutely love if you did um and i'll see you on the next one bye